You need to learn Ansible right now. But hold up, why? What is it? Why is it so important? I have some good reasons. Here's why. When you hear the word Ansible, I want you to think automation. IT automation. So that means systems, cloud, networking, automating all the things. Ansible is one of the most popular tools out there for this function, automation of IT stuff. It's owned by Red Hat, super simple to use, and guess what? You don't need to know any programming. It helps, but you don't need to know it. My goal in this video is to show you why adding Ansible to your skill set will be crazy valuable. So we'll cover, hey, what the junk is Ansible? How can I even use this? What's it look like? We'll then get our hands dirty and actually use Ansible to do some things like automate some Linux stuff, automate some networking stuff, Cisco routers and switches, and you will have an opportunity to play with this. All right, got your coffee? Let's do it. First tackle, why? Why do you need Ansible? And we'll look at it from the perspective of like a, a Linux system admin. So I might have one server that I need to manage. Managing this server is super easy. I'm happy, it's great. When I have to make a change, for example, maybe changing the DNS server that this Linux box uses. It's easy, like for CentOS, all I do is update the etc. resolve.conf file. Update one file, I'm golden. But then what if I have a lot more servers to manage, which is most likely the case if you're a Linux admin, who's gonna pay you to manage one Linux server? I don't know, if you had that gig, you have a sweet gig. But a lot of servers, um, I'm not happy anymore because then I'll have to log into each individual box and change this file, it, it takes time. And that's just one thing, what, I have, what if I have to do so many other tasks to manage these boxes? That's where Ansible comes in. Whew, it's so cool, check this out. With Ansible, I'll put a server up that has Ansible running on it and I'll make this my master, my control station. This is my command center where I make all the magic happen, where I make control. In that same scenario, if I needed to change the DNS servers on all my servers, I would just make the change here on my control station, etc. resolve, I'll make it my change to that file. And then my control station goes out and <laughs> and makes the changes to all my servers. So the big difference, before I'm logging into every server individually, making the change, making the change, huh, redundant, monotonous. With Ansible, I make the change on my control station. I say, control station, commander, I would like to change all my servers. Do it now, boo, and it does it. Now Ansible is not the only tool that does this, but it is the easiest. It is crazy easy to set up, and I'll show you that here in a moment. I'll walk you through it. It'll take about five minutes, for real. Okay, what if you're not a Linux admin? What if you're a network engineer? Guess what, this works for you too. If you have a bunch of routers to manage, which we often do, Ansible can do the same thing for you. So instead of updating the configuration on each individual router, logging in, logging in, and maybe updating the NTP peer or updating the banner, tedious, ho-hum, monotonous, Ansible, you do it in one place and you can update all your devices. This makes me extra, extra happy. Joker smile happy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fun facts about Ansible. It's a pretty big deal because they are owned by Red Hat. Red Hat is pretty much the enterprise standard for Linux everywhere. You might be familiar with their free version, CentOS. So if your goal is to become a Linux system admin, or really, <laughs> at this point, any admin for any area of IT, learning automation tools like Ansible, it's key. It's You have to, right now. <laughs> Ansible is also Python based, which makes it extra cool. And then this is probably the, the greatest feature I love about Ansible. It is agentless. What does that mean? Well, typically when you're doing automation, your automation tool will require you to install some sort of agent or client on the machine. Now, in a lot of cases, this is not possible, especially for network engineers, because we have Cisco routers running Cisco IOS and you can't install crap on those. So then we can't manage it with that system, but with Ansible, it's agentless. It simply connects over SSH and runs commands. It's awesome. We'll go into a few of the nuts and bolts of how that works here in a moment. Both Ansible, it's not just Linux, it's not just Cisco IOS, it's Azure, uh, AWS, Windows machines. You can manage your entire infrastructure. Did I mention it was free? Yes, it is free. And um, you can install it on pretty much any Linux distro, even Mac OS. Now, why is it free? Well, it's it's open source, much like CentOS is. Now, of course, there's a paid version, just like CentOS has Red Hat as the paid enterprise version. Ansible has what's called Ansible Tower, which is like this awesome thing. And that gives you a few more bells and whistles, but Ansible it's by itself is amazing. And as far as how it interacts with the machines and, and routers and switches it controls, it's definitely a push model. It's very pushy. 
you have pull and push models. This one pushes configuration to devices, pushes commands, whereas other models might have it to where the device will pull configurations from the control station or node. Okay, enough fun facts. Time to get our hands dirty and actually play with Ansible and see why it's so awesome. This is also your chance to just get started with it. Because that's sometimes the biggest hurdle to learning something in IT, is just getting started. So I'm going to walk you through it right now. So whether you're using a virtual machine, Mac OS, the cloud, we're going to walk through the setup and start playing with Ansible right now. Now, because I love the cloud, I'll be setting up my lab in Linode, my cloud service provider, and the sponsor of this video. So if you want to set up your lab right now and follow along with me, I've got a link below, $20 credit. It'll pretty much get you through whatever you need to do right now. So pretty much free, and uh, we'll have some fun. So go to linode.com forward slash network chuck. So I'll navigate on over to linode.com. Get myself logged in, set up a free account if you don't already have one. For this lab, we'll set up three servers in the cloud or on your own virtual machines in your, in your home or wherever you are. One will be the control station or the master, the guy controlling everything, and the two others will be the guys being controlled. Let's do this. So for the control node, I got a special thing for you to save some time. Here in Linode on the dashboard, if you look at the option right here, it's called stack scripts. Click on that. I have one called Network Chuck Ansible that will be publicly available to any of you. To find that, you'll go to Community Scripts right here and you'll search Network Chuck. Now, what is a stack script? Well, it allows me to deploy a virtual machine with a script that I'll have it pre-configured the way I want it to. So if I jump into this stack script and edit it, uh, you'll see I have a few commands that launch when it deploys. So if you're deploying this on your own server or on your own laptop or wherever, th these are the commands that you would enter to make it work. You would first use yum to update, then you would install the EPL release to be able to install Ansible, and then you'll install Ansible. So that's all I'm doing. And that's pretty much all you have to do to get Ansible installed. All these commands right here. So if you're following along here in Linode, we'll just click on the dots here and say deploy new Linode. We're basing this lab off CentOS 7, and I'll choose my region here in Dallas. I'll select the smallest node I can on the standard plan here and put in my password and click create. And now we wait. Actually, you know, while we're waiting for that one to set up, let's go set up our other two right now. For our other two virtual machines, we'll click on create at the top here and click on the node. Choose our image, it'll be CentOS 7. Region, Dallas. Pick your region that's closest to you. You'll have the best performance. Choose my size, put in my password and click create. And now rinse and repeat, do that once more for another virtual machine. Okay. Our three servers are created. I'm gonna jump into my Ansible server right here, the one we created with our stack script. And I'll go over here and copy my public IP address so I can connect to it. And I'll use my favorite SSH client, Solar Putty, and we'll get connected. I'll log in as root, which is the default user, and then put in my password I set up at the time of creation. As long as I put it in right. There we go. And the first thing I wanna do is get to my Ansible directory. So I'll do CD or change directory and go to forward slash, etc. forward slash, Ansible. Bam. If I do ls, I can see what's inside there. Got three files. The two we care about right now are Ansible config and the host file. Ansible config is obviously where we have our Ansible configuration settings. The host file contains the list of things we're going to control. So our two Linux servers, we're going to control and make it do what we want to. Those guys will be in this file, but not yet. We haven't added them yet. And that host file is one of the key components in how Ansible works. It's often referred to as the inventory file. And much like any inventory, it'll list all the things that you control, all your Linux machines, your routers, if you're a network engineer, your switches. It lists the things that you're going to control. So let's jump in there. We'll use the command VI as one of the editors. You can use Nano or whatever one you're comfortable with, but you can follow along with me right now using VI. I know, I normally use Nano. I'm switching to Vim just a little bit. So we'll do VI host to edit this file. If you're not logged in as root, you may want to add sudo to the beginning of that command. So you have super awesome administrative access but I'm root, I don't need that right now. All the stuff at the beginning is helpful, it tells you how it works. We don't need that re uh, right now. We'll go to the bottom of the file, we'll hit I, and now we're editing. So I means insert, we're gonna be editing in this file. First, we're going to add our Linux servers to the inventory. So we'll create a group called Linux servers. The way we define a group is by doing brackets, and I'll just call it Linux, closing bracket, and just below are the hosts. So I'll go back to Linode and grab the IP addresses of my other guys here. This guy, I'll grab his IP address and paste that right there. And then my other one and paste that right there. Now that right there is pretty much all you have to do to have a host in the inventory to where Ansible will try to reach out and control them when you do things. But we do want to define some things like, hey, what username and password are we going to use when we try to connect to these servers? So let's go ahead and do that now. So just below that, we can do another bracket and put Linux 
colon, so Linux is the group we're referencing, those servers up there, and then we'll put vars and closing bracket. And just below that are the attributes or the options we're changing for those servers when we connected them. And for our Linux boxes, it's just two options we're gonna change. The first one will be Ansible underscore user equals the username. Now I'm going to be using the root account and this is just for labbing purposes. I know I'm gonna get raked over the coals for people like, ah, why are you using root? You should never use root. You shouldn't. You should use a specified account just for Ansible. But hey, we're just getting our feet wet. We're, we're trying this out. So don't freak out about this. As you move forward, you'll do best practices, don't worry. And then we'll uh, do the option Ansible underscore password. And this will be the password you use to log in, the one you created when you first created these Linodes. My password was, here we go, password123. And that was it. Not too bad, right? Uh, now let's save the document. Now if you were using VI like I am, you'll hit the escape button, escape, and then colon WQ. And you'll notice I have the WQ at the bottom here. It basically means write and quit. Done. So you just set up the inventory file for Ansible and we're almost there, right? We're almost done. We just gotta do one more thing. We're gonna jump into the Ansible configuration file. So I'll do vi ansible.cfg and we're gonna change one option. We're gonna scroll down until we find the option that's, uh, let me show you, right here. Host key checking equals false. Normally with Ansible in production, you'll have host key checking with SSH keys and everything. It's very secure. For us, we're just labbing. So we're going to disable this function. So we avoid all the headaches of trying to set that up. So we'll enable this option by going into edit mode by hitting I, and then we'll remove that hashtag there or pound sign, however you want to refer to it. And that essentially enables that configuration. So host key checking equals false. We're not going to be host key checking. And then we'll hit escape colon WQ to save. And we're pretty much ready to go. I'm going to clear my screen here. So I have a clean slate. And now we're going to do our first Ansible command. And it's simple. We're just going to ping our devices and see if they are here. And OK. So the command we are using is Ansible. And then we'll specify what host we're going to be dealing with. You can specify one host by specifying the IP address or whatever. Um, I'm going to specify just Linux, the group we created. And I'll look at those two hosts we put in there. Then we'll do dash M, which stands for module. We'll cover what that means here in a moment. But the module we'll be using is called ping. And that's all we need. I'm going to hit enter. And boom, it worked. We used Ansible. If you just did that, you used Ansible. And you found out that, uh, hey, you actually gathered some facts. Ansible can gather facts about your machines, about the things it controls. And you can use those facts to do cool stuff. And it also told us that, hey, the ping was successful. You pinged it. It ponged on both things, servers. <laughs> cool, let's try something else. Let's try entering regular Linux commands like we would on a on one machine, but we can do it on two machines at one time. So we'll do Ansible, we'll specify what host we're gonna be using again. So I'll say Linux, then I'll do dash A. This is kind of like ad hoc commands, just on the fly commands you wanna use. And I'll put those in quotes and I'll say, let's, um, let's see what OS release these servers are on. So I can cat those files and do et cetera, forward slash OS release. And let's see what happens. Bam, look at that. It went to both servers, enter those commands, and it gave us the contents of the OS release file, which in this case tells us it's CentOS Linux 7. We get information from two servers with one command. Super cool. I love it. Let's do one more thing. What do you say we just reboot the machines? Ansible, specify our host, Linux, dash A, and we'll say reboot. And of course the connection was reset because we rebooted them. And let's make sure our machines are coming back up. So we'll do Ansible, Linux, dash M, ping, see if they're up again. Yes, okay, they're up. Now what we're doing right now is just more of just ad hoc commands, command line commands we can just do real quick. But there's a more powerful way to use Ansible. And that's through the use of something called a playbook. A playbook is accomplishing the same thing that we just did on the command line. We're making changes to multiple servers or devices to make our lives easier. This is just a bit more organized. Now this is a term borrowed from sports. A playbook will contain plays. And these plays will each have their own tasks. What the junk does that mean? <laughs> we'll talk about it right now. Now a playbook is actually a file we'll create. It's um, a YAML file. What is YAML? Now we're not gonna go into too much detail about what YAML is, but it's a data serialization language. And don't let that scare you. It's just a way we're gonna look at our data in a file, the way we format it and, and, and use it so that computers can love it. It actually stands for YAML ain't markup language and Ansible loves it, it's what it uses. So much so that to help me remember that it does use it, I call it Yansible. Anyways, this will be a YAML file, and these tasks are just things we want to do to our, our Linux machines. So for example, what we just did, like uh, rebooting our machine. 
that might be one task that we perform on our Linux machines. Let's take a look at one right now, actually. Now this right here is a YAML file. Notice we have three dashes up here that kind of denotes it's a YAML file. Um, the file type is .yml, or the extension is. And then notice all this awesome spacing and the way it's organized. It's very human readable. That's the way it was designed. It's designed for humans and computers. We can coexist finally. So this whole file right here is a playbook. And this right here, where I said name and I love nano, that's the play. And then underneath that play, we have our tasks. So in this play, I have one task, one thing I want to do. I want to make sure that the text editor nano is installed on all my servers. And that's what I named it. Ensure nano is there. And then I enlist the help of a module. This right here is a module. And actually I designed this with uh, Ubuntu because I use APT. This should be the yum module because we'll be installing nano on CentOS boxes. And these modules are basically little small programs that help us define the state we want our servers to be in. So for example, I wanna use the yum module to make sure that nano is on these machines. And the state I want it to be in is I want it to have the latest version of nano. So when I run this playbook, it's going to do that. What do you say we do that right now? So I'll copy the contents of my YAML file here. I'll jump back into my Ansible control station and I'll create a new file. I'll do VI, I'll name it, I love nano.yml. This is my playbook. I'll hit I to start editing this and I'll paste this in there. Now there's one thing I need to edit and notice this. I said the host I want to mess with, it says CentOS. That's not any host or anything we have in our system right now. Um, the host I want to mess with is the group called Linux. The one we defined in the host file. So with that changed, I'll hit escape, colon, WQ to save this bad boy and boom. So now we're gonna run this. Now this, this is what I love about Ansible, check this out. Ah, just watch. I don't wanna spoil that for you. To run a playbook in Ansible, we'll do the command or use the command ansible dash playbook and we'll specify the file. I love nano.yml. That's it. Let's hit enter and go. There's the play, I love nano. There's the task, gathering facts. Oh, it's done. Okay. So many cool things just happened. The first thing it did is it has a task called gathering facts. You can disable this if you want, but by default, it's going to do this and just gather information about the system. Then I have the task I defined, make sure nano is there. Using the yum package manager, it's going to make sure yum is installed and the state should be the latest version available. And then here's the play recap, our play by play. I love this so much. Um, it tells me the status of each node, it tells me things are good. And it tells me that it changed on the host, meaning it installed nano. Now, can I show you something real cool, real quick right now? Let's run that play again or that playbook again. Ready? Watch what happens, and this is interesting. This is what makes Ansible really, really cool. Look what happened when we ran this. We have an okay status, but then notice what was changed. Nothing, zero changes. Ansible will not make a change if the state that we want it in is already there. That's called idempotency, idempotent. <laughs> it's, it's a word, it's fancy word to describe what we just saw. It won't make a change unless it has to make a change. And that's killer in this world, in this world of automation. All I did was made sure that the, our desired state, my desired state that Nano would be on these machines and it verified that and made sure it was there. And if it wasn't, it would make that change. We saw that happen. What do you say we reverse it? What do you say we make Nano not be there anymore? I'll clear my screen. We'll jump into that same file again. I love nano.yml using VI. And I'll hit I to start editing this. And I'll change the state from latest to absent, hit escape, colon WQ to get out of there. Now let's run that play again. Ansible playbook, I love nano.yml. We should have renamed our task, ensure nano's there. No, ensure nano's not there. And it, it changed, <laughs> changed one. It made sure nano wasn't there anymore. Okay, that was the basics of Ansible. We went through something very, very basic. Now I want you to go crazy and do some cool stuff. But how do you go crazy? Well, look at the documentation and start playing around. Let me show you. On Ansible's website, they have all their modules documented. So you can go in there and see what's available. And you can go just absolutely crazy and have fun with it. And of course, you can look up examples online. They have a ton of examples available for you. Oh, and by the way, all these will have links below, including the example script I used. Now, again, I want you to go crazy. I want you to do some cool things, both in your own lab and, and maybe in your real production stuff. I, I don't know. Don't get me in trouble, but I want to see that. Uh, comment below what you might end up doing or what you're already doing. Maybe you're already an Ansible beast. Let us know how you're using it. Now, this video did not cover every little thing about Ansible. That would take way too long. There's entire courses dedicated to learning Ansible, which by the way, you should check out at cbtnuggets.com. Links below for that.
The goal of this video was just to get you started, to get your feet wet, to get over that first initial hurdle to try out Ansible, to understand how it works and to realize that it's not so scary just to get started. Huge shout out to Linode, the sponsor of this video for uh, giving us a really great, easy way to try it out without even having even any hardware, any, anything at all in our own networks. All you need is a, uh, well, really a phone or iPad or computer. Bam, you can connect to it and, and work with it. Now, what about Cisco devices? What about network devices? You didn't show us that. I will, just not in this video. That's coming soon. And if you're going for your CCMP Encore, um, we'll have that type of training on CBT Nuggets when it's available very, very soon. So link below for that. It's coming, don't worry. Well guys, that's about it. I hope you are able to move forward with Ansible and add that to your skill set because automation and IT is here to stay. Both the networking and system admin stuff and cloud stuff, it's the future. And um, as you learn the basics, you'll eventually get to the point where automation will be your best friend because those repetitive tasks or managing large networks and, and large infrastructures becomes impossible without some sort or form of automation. Whew, that's about it for me. I've been talking too much. I'll catch you guys later.